Inside the city limits, there's 750,000 people. In the metro area, there's 1.2 million. Now, let's bring that down to, to help you understand it. We come from an area in North Mississippi that had about 7,000 in the city limits and 20 to 25,000 in the county. You're talking about a fish out of water? We feel like a fish out of water in the metro area of Louisville. It is enormous. Some other statistics about it. We're, right, we're, almost, number, we're, we're almost number 60, I think, for the year in shootings or, or deaths related to shootings. Uh, that, that's phenomenal. I mean, that's just, you know, we, we come from a county in Mississippi that if you had one a year, that was more than, than needed. And here we've already marked up to 60. You know, towards the end of February, you probably heard the news reports, there were over an average of 30 overdoses a day in Louisville, drug overdoses. Uh, listen, they, they were busy. Uh, and it, it's a big city. Y'all know about that. I don't have to tell you that. But listen, in, in big cities, there's a lot of churches. But a lot of those churches are not living up to their capacity or living up to their potential. The church there at Louisville, First Free Will Baptist, it didn't live up to its potential or it's not now. We're down to about eight people. We need help. We need something needs to be done. So why are we going to Louisville? It's called church revitalization. And if you'll notice, I've got the word vital highlighted there. Why? Because it is vital that we become aware of what church revitalization is and become part of the solution to it. Not just in Free Will Baptist, but all denominations along, they're suffering with churches closing their doors every single day. Over 4,000 this year will shut their doors. That's an average of about 11 churches per day. Think about it. 11 churches per day closing their doors. And when their doors close, their light of influence is snuffed out. It's no longer there. We're losing the influence. You look around and you see society and you see how it's changed. Why? Because the church has changed. The church is not as, as vocal as it once was. The church is not as, as active as it once was. We've, we've, you know, we could give excuse after excuse. The bottom line is churches are closing their doors every single day. And, and it's almost to the point of epidemic. And we need to do something to stop that. Here's what revitalize means. It means to impact new life or vigor to, to restore to an active or fresh condition. And that's what we want to do in Louisville. We want to take the existing church there and we want to create something new there. We want to bring it back to life. I wish I had time this morning to tell you what all God has done thus far. But when we walked in that church in September, I looked into the eyes of those few people that were there and I saw nothing but emptiness in their eyes. There was no glimmer of hope. There was no excitement. There was nothing there. If you've ever looked into, uh, you know, just... Nothing. That's what it was. No life. Nobody cares for us. Nobody wants to come help us. Nobody wants to do anything to lead us and, and get us to that place to where we can fully be used to our potential. Nothing. I mean, they had gotten to the point where they didn't even clean the church. I've got pictures on my phone. And I tell this all over. I said, if you want to see them, I'll show them to you. But i got pictures on my phone of where there's, there's mildew on the pews. There was mildew on the hymn books. When you picked up the hymn books, it felt like there was some fuzziness on there. Well, it was. It was mildew. There was all on the baseboards and the ends of the pews. And, and, and we, we moved in the end of February, and I took those next four weeks in March and stayed there, preached them because I wanted to get to know them and them get to know us and hear the vision and, and buy into it. And, and I turned around that first Sunday, and I was going to ask people to come to the altar, and the altar was nothing but white. And the angle in which I was, I mean... It was pitiful. I said, we can't do this. We've got to clean this place up. We cleaned it up the next Saturday. And uh, some walked in Sunday that didn't come clean and said, man, it, it smells better in here. I said, well, yeah, you clean it. Of course it's going to smell better. <clears throat> so listen, I mean, that, that's what it was. That's, to, that's, that's the lowest I believe I have ever seen anybody. And then they admitted, yeah, we just didn't feel like cleaning. We had no reason to clean it. I was like, what? What do you mean you didn't have any reason to clean it? So to take that, and we're going to do some things to help remodel. We're going to spruce up in there a little bit. That's ruffling a few feathers, but hey, that's all right. If it didn't work, and it hadn't been working, well, let's change it up a little bit. Let's do, I'm not doing an extreme makeover. I'm not calling Ty Pennington to come in. We're just doing it ourselves, all right? But we want to establish, we want to restore something there. Tom Chaney put it this way, and I think this would be the bottom line to everything. Church revitalization emphasizes the missional work of turning a plateaued 
or rapidly declining church around and moving it back towards growth. Whatever happened in the last few years leading up to where we're at now, I don't care, all right? I understand we need to know what history says so we don't repeat those same things over. I understand that. But my purpose there is from this point forward. What can we do to take this church that has rapidly declined and bring new growth back to it? I challenge you to go home this afternoon or this week and look up church revitalization. Go Google it and find out and start reading for yourself. And you're going to see a lot of things come up. You're going to see a lot of information come up. And it's going to blow your mind as to the need for church revitalization and why we've gotten there. I mean, we, we could sit here today and we could try to diagnose why a church has plateaued or why it's declining. I mean, we could look at that. And listen, it's not always those churches with just a few people in it that have plateaued and declined. There's been some full churches that are plateaued. We get, and even in our own lives, when you look at it in our own lives, you know, maybe the reason our church has plateaued is because we spiritually have plateaued. You know, we, we need to do some things that will, will, will invigorate growth within us. Well, Ed Stetzer said it this way. He said, church revitalization is an opportunity to lead God's people to a renewed focus on God's mission. What is God's mission for the church? To win souls. It is to carry the gospel out into the world. To reach, to preach, to evangelize, to teach them, baptize them, and do the things that will prepare them to go out and repeat that process. And what happens when we connect with people? Well, I've already said it. We're going to connect them to Christ. And we're going to connect them to the church. And we're going to connect them to the community. We're going to take the entire purpose of Matthew uh, 28 and the, and the Great Commission and in, envelop that into our church and teach our people how to go out into the community and win their friends, their neighbors, their family for the sake of the kingdom.